So I want to give a little bit of history before diving into the art exhibition that we're seeing today. And if you're wondering, where are you? It doesn't look like London. You're right. I'm out at Blenheim Palace. So if you're not familiar with Blenheim Palace, according to their website, the palace was a gift from Queen Anne to the first Duke of Marlborough, following his decisive victory over the French at the Battle of Blenheim in 1704. And if that still doesn't ring a bell to you, you might remember it from the movie The Favourite, which this was loosely based on. However, what I find most interesting is the Blenheim Art Foundation, which was founded in 2014 by the 12th Duke of Marlborough, who is an avid contemporary art collector. And he created this foundation to bring in a more contemporary art experience, kind of break out of the box of the traditional white cube gallery and breathe new life into the palace. And so that is what we're doing here today. We're gonna see an exhibition by Cecily Brown that's hosted within the palace. So out of all of the artists that have exhibited at Blenheim Palace as a part of the Blenheim Arts Foundation, such as Ai Weiwei and Lawrence Wiener, Cecily Brown is actually the first one to create paintings specifically for the palace that were inspired by the palace. This work is titled Hunt with Nature Moore and Blenheim Spaniel. And Brown is known for using animal imagery in her work, so this wasn't really too far off from her typical subject matter. But she's made this more specific to the castle by including a spaniel in the bottom right of the artwork that's known as the Blenheim Spaniel, which the first Duke of Marlborough used for hunting pigeon and quail in the 1700s. What made this trip out here even more special is the time of year and that we got to see the exhibit. Blenheim Palace is decorated so beautifully for Christmas, it honestly just got me in the most Christmassy mood to be here this time of year. These smaller works, which we see here on the wall, are inspired by two different things. One is the castle, the Marlborough coat of arms, which we see a lot of these symbols being pulled from, but then also the colors of a Beano and Dandy comic strip, which was a part of Brown's childhood living in the UK in the 1970s. Here on our left is a peek into the Great Hall, which is where the exhibition actually starts. And those are Cecily Brown's paintings that are hanging from the balconies. And she uses red and white and black in these works as a tribute to the Churchill family crest. And in the center of the Great Hall, if you can see, there is a big display case that shows off all of the artist's source material that she used as inspiration and reference for when she was creating these works. Here's a little peek into the dining room, and don't worry, we're gonna walk through there a little bit later and see it in all of its splendor.
are in the red drawing room, which is absolutely breathtaking, and it contains two of Brown's paintings, Hunt after Franz Cinders and The Children of the Fourth Duke. And The Children of the Fourth Duke is a really interesting one. Brown created and reimagined a new portrait of Sir Joshua Reynolds, which was the fourth Duke of Marlborough, and painted it to focus not on the Duke, like normal in art history, but the women of the family who are often forgotten. And this is particularly significant because Lady Caroline, who's at the heart of the new painting, was a very accomplished painter herself. So we can really look at this as an homage to her and the gender inequality that women had to endure for so many years. This is the green writing room, and I think one of the sweetest paintings in the exhibit is Dog is Life, and it's this piece that's positioned above the fireplace, and that's no coincidence. The painting, which puts this hunting dog front and center in this place of honor in the same way that we see with portraits of the dukes, it's really resonating with this English tradition of how so many in the UK feel towards their household pets. The first state room features the first of Brown's paintings that are predominantly placed in the center of the room, as opposed to being hung on the wall like they were in the red drawing room and the green writing room. And the paintings that are displayed are titled Spot the Spaniel and There Will Be Bluebirds, and they're honestly some of the happier works <laughs> as opposed to the more dramatic, violent abstract works that are depicting the hunt. And they really represent Brown's nostalgia for her heritage that she kind of hints at uh, as she reconnected with where she's from. She's been living in New York for decades and this exhibition has really had her re-examine her history as someone being born and raised in the UK. The second state room has a large work titled The Hound with the Horse's Hooves. And this painting is really significant because it was inspired by one of the nearby tapestries on the walls, the Marlborough Tapestries, that was a commission by the first Duke of Marlborough from weavers in Brussels in 1701. And they were made to commemorate his various military victories, particularly <laughs> the Battle of Blenheim, which is what this entire palace um, was created for. This is the third stateroom and the final stateroom that we'll see and in it is a very special artwork. I know that I keep saying that but <laughs> this is a very special artwork. This is Brown's first textile work and as I mentioned Brown was really inspired by the palace's woven tapestries so so much so that she created this hand-woven wool rug as a tribute and on this rug, the shapes and the symbols that you see are a nod to the military symbols in the tapestries within the palace.
This room is called the Long Library, and it's literally that. <laughs> it's a little, very large room, very long, with library books lining it, and it's actually why I'm huddling beside the fire, because it's absolutely freezing in here. <laughs> but more importantly is this artwork on the left, which is the final artwork that we're going to see of the exhibit. This is Cecily Brown's largest artwork in the exhibit, and it's titled The Triumph of Death. And this is not just the largest work in the exhibit, but actually the largest work that Cecily Brown has ever created, ever. And due to its massive scale, it had to be created in four pieces and then assembled on site. So if you look really closely, you might be able to see some of the seams in the individual four canvases. And this artwork was inspired by a 15th century fresco in Palermo, Sicily. And in the original work, death, which you can see here on the white horse, is firing arrows at a crowd of people, bishops, knights, and maidens. And in Brown's, she replaces these figures with her own cast of characters that are more appropriate and relevant to the palace and its history. So. She includes hunters, soldiers, animals, and figures of nobility from the portraits that are hanging around the castle. If you do ever have the chance to visit Blenheim Palace, I highly recommend you bring really comfortable walking shoes that you can get a little muddy. I say this because I did not do this, <laughs> but the grounds are absolutely beautiful. And a cool fun fact of the grounds are that the Harry Potter tree is here and you can see it once the sun gets out of the way, but this tree uh, was featured in the Order of the Phoenix Harry Potter film as the Whomping Willow, and so they've built a protected barrier around it, but everyone comes to, to see the famous Harry Potter tree that's apparently 300 years old.
So we got a little glimpse of this earlier, but at nighttime, the courtyards of the castle really transform into this literal winter wonderland. Like if I grew up in the UK as a kid, I would have just loved and looked forward to coming here every single year. And yeah, we waited around until nightfall to see the famous light show, which you can get a little glimpse of here. 